Hello everyone, as always I'm Cosmic and today we're reviewing indie dungeon exploration game Guild of Dungeoneering. The game was developed by Gambrinos, a small indie studio based in Dublin and published by Versus Evil. Guild of Dungeoneering is at its core a card game that incorporates elements of games like Dungeon Keeper. Instead of building dungeons to stop heroes, you build a dungeon to help your hero as you progress further in it. The game's story places you in the role of someone who was rejected by the renowned Ivory League of Explorers, a much-loved guild of adventurers. They rejected you and labelled you as grossly incompetent. So you stole some of their gold to buy a guild hall to start your own guild, um, with the sole intention of basically showing them. Rather content to sit back and let others do the work for you, you manage to convince a chump to start the ball rolling. There's not much story or narrative to be had in the game, but what is there is packed full of humour. In particular, my favourite is the narrator, who speaks in humorous prose and rhymes. It's a reactionary narration that comments on what you're doing, uh, such as if you succeed at a dungeon or have a massive failure at a dungeon, um, then they will comment on that. The narrator frequently insults you and your guild, which has often brought a smile to my face. It is, however, limited, and you'll hear the same things over and over. It's a nice touch trying to be Bastion-like, but it doesn't have the scope of narration that Bastion does. While it is certainly funny and a highlight, hearing the same verse again and again when you die can become very tiresome. In between sending off your expendable lackeys to risk their lives for your plunder, you must build up your guild. Using the gold collected from dungeon runs, you can build more facilities, essentially from three different trees, might, magic and loot. Might buildings essentially let you access physical attacking classes as well as physical focused blessings which you can place on a character before a dungeon. Magic is essentially the same as might except it obviously focuses on magic focused classes. The loot tree essentially gives you access to buildings that allow you to unlock weapons and armour that then can be looted in a dungeon. Each table has three tiers. Each tier provides better classes, blessings or equipment. Placing down buildings is simple and straightforward. By dragging and dropping them it's very easily done and it doesn't particularly matter where you place them as long as it's connected to an original building. For class buildings, you'll be able to see the currently recruited character and clicking on them does provide limited entertaining dialogue. I particularly like the British slang touches as well as the references to Catherine Tate. The guild also has a graveyard where you can visit the graves of your fallen minions. The game does have permadeath so killed characters will stay dead and usually the graveyard will have an insulting epitaph engraved on their tombstone. One thing that did bother me however about the permadeath is is that names are reused a lot and there's not a particularly large library of names so you'll get to see the same characters with possibly the same appearances over and over. Lastly is the trophy room where the trophies gained from dungeon boss monsters will be displayed for no other purpose than personal pride. The game houses a variety of classes each with their own unique traits and cards. There are six classes of might and six classes of magic. Might has bow shooting rangers, self harming berserkers and vigorous holy grail knights. Magic houses some interesting classes in the form of shapeshifters, potion savvy alchemists and the hilarious math magicians. The world map is simple and selecting a dungeon only takes a few clicks. The main game has four main areas to complete, each with several dungeons and unique locales such as jungles. Each dungeon has two or more levels each with different objectives. Some levels do have different mechanics in that you'll have to succeed in a certain number of turns or that you must avoid a monster who's chasing you. The variety of objectives is a nice touch and it stops each dungeon from being a rinse and repeat of the last which would become very boring very quickly. Once you've made your selection you're headed off on your merry old quest, you'll head into the dungeon. Each dungeon will have some pre-placed rooms with enemies, loot, a starting point and probably your objective. Each turn a random hand of cards is dealt including seek cards which are rooms, dread cards which are monsters and loot cards which essentially give you the ability to place down loot. 
You can place up to three cards each turn, and once your cards are placed, the hero will then move onto the highlighted route. You do not directly control the hero, nor select where they can go. The hero will go the quickest way to the objective, or head for the nearest loot. This means that you must plan strategically when creating the dungeon around them, by making sure that they don't head into the path of enemies too strong, or that they don't go straight for the objective when you know they can't win it. You can affect the hero's path by placing down seat cards and loot cards to make sure that they go the route that you want them to go, so essentially you have to bribe them. Combat is something that you're going to have to be doing a lot, after all this is a card battler game. Each card represents an ability. There are a variety of cards to use in combat, each with different effects. Attack, defense, healing and trait cards are all in there, and often cards do more than one thing, such as the counter card, which defends one physical damage and bestows two physical damage. Each class has different decks that usually uni have unique cards respective to their class and abilities. The Berserker has lots of physical attack cards that also inflict damage to itself. The Shapeshifter has a mix of magical and physical cards with a focus on healing and buffing next round attacks. Some classes interact with general cards abilities as well, such as the Ranger, who if you have a card that has the Swift ability, the Swift ability counts as an extra damage for the Ranger only. Combat has a very interesting mix of strategy and sometimes luck. It's a combat system that is often deceptively simple as the cards, classes and traits do offer quite a deep system. It's not as multi-layered as other card games and it's certainly not as deep as something like Hearthstone, but it's enough to keep you going and entertained. Leveling up your character is also important to be able to take on the tougher enemies and boss monsters. Taking on higher level enemies will increase your hero's level faster. Leveling up gives you more health and better cards, which gives you a fighting chance against the tougher enemies. The main way to improve, however, is to gain more cards, which more often than not happens by equipping weapons and armour. Loot is obtained via chests or defeating enemies. Weapons and armour also have levels, so a level 3 sword will give better cards than a level 1 sword. Loot can also give traits and health, and finding a good mix of equipment that bestows cards, health and traits is optimum. Something I did like was that your Dungeoneer's portrait changes depending on what equipment you've equipped, which adds a nice little aesthetical touch. It's cute to see your little person wearing a mage robe, horned helm with a cup of tea for a weapon. Yes, the game's humour does extend to the loot. Magical fountains also provide interesting buffs and debuffs should you land on them and they will last for the next fight only. The enemy variety in the game is excellent, each with their own traits and tactics. Each of the four main areas to the game has its own set of monsters, with ever increasing difficulty in what you will face. The difficulty of the game is not too hard, but be prepared to die a lot as it is rather challenging and sometimes you just won't get the look of the cards, a few bad hands or the occasional bad decision can mean death for you and your Dungeoneer. Control wise, the game is all clicking and occasionally some dragging and dropping. There's not much to it control wise and by looking at the UI design, it has without a doubt been designed for an easy mobile port in the future. I actually think that it would be a perfect game for a mobile port, and it would do very well on iOS and mobile devices. It's glaringly obvious that the game was created with a mobile version in mind, which usually means the PC version can suffer. In terms of usability, it really doesn't. The UI can occasionally be unresponsive when clicking a button, however the developers don't seem to have sacrificed anything in particular from the game to make it touchscreen friendly. I did really enjoy the game's cute minimalist art style. The background white graph paper with the pencil shaded graphics not only look good, but kind of reinforce the humour feel to the game. Much of the game is white and grey, but the occasional use of colour with vivid reds and blues does work well. 
The sound of the game is great and the voice acting with the medieval style music working hand in hand is fantastic. The humour of the game really shines through in the sound design and the only criticism that I would have of it is that I wanted more narration. I simply wanted more. I wanted Bastion style narration where the narrator would comment on everything that I'm doing especially in the actual dungeons themselves. I think overall Guild of Dungeoneering is a fun well put together card battler. Its dungeon building elements work well and the game's humour shines through in everything that it does. It's certainly worth picking up and it's easily enjoyable for what it is. There's very little to dislike in the game and with the Pirate's Cove DLC on the horizon there will no doubt be more content to come. I really think this is one of the best indie games I've played over the past couple of months so it is certainly worth a look especially for the price. And that is my Guild of Dungeoneering review. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Do like, subscribe and leave a comment and I will see you next time.